The great thing about a MIDI-based keys rig is it can follow you wherever you go. If you have a laptop, basic MIDI controller, and audio hardware, it's really simple to practice with the gear you're gonna use at church at home. But here's the problem. When you're tearing down and setting up that gear over and over, especially in new environments, places you've never played before, it's really likely that there's gonna be some more points of failure, potential things that could go wrong. I'm gonna walk you through the gear I take with me every time I play worship keys anywhere and explain why I think it sets me up for success. Let's dive in. Okay, let's start with the absolute basics. My MacBook goes with me everywhere, and of course, a Mac charger. If you want some specific recommendations on what models of Mac are actually up for running Key Software Live, we'll put a link in the description. The reason that being able to run all of your sounds off of your computer is so powerful is you're literally able to plug into any MIDI controller, go into any environment, and know that the sounds and programming you've worked on on your computer are gonna translate. With this at the center of the rig, you're able to prep wherever you are, go somewhere else, plug in, and have pretty much the same outcome. Next up, I always take all the cables I know I need to plug into any MIDI controller around. I'm a big fan of the brand Cable Matters. You can purchase these cables on Amazon. They're color-coded by length, and there's all sorts of different varieties available. So rather than use a USB hub, I'm a big fan of just plugging everything possible straight into my Mac. So if one thing gets unplugged, everything doesn't get unplugged. This is USB-B on one side and USB-C on the other. So I'm using this to connect my MIDI keyboard. I'm gonna use this to connect my Nano Control 2 USB Mini to USB-C. And I also like to bring a spare uh, for my primary MIDI keyboard connection because if that goes down and I don't have a backup, I'm not playing that Sunday. And then lastly, I've got a Thunderbolt cable which I'm using to connect my audio interface this is USB-C sized on both ends. The other thing I'll point out now is that I love having a cable wrap on all of these cables. When I start wiring my cables up to the keyboard stand, I'll actually use these to spool around the legs of whatever stand. It's sort of built in cable management, keeps everything looking clean, and it makes things way less likely to get unplugged once the rig is in place. Next up, let's talk about power. Now, I'm a big fan of taking a power strip with me no matter where I'm going to play because you never know what you're gonna be getting into. I also love this particular Furman power strip because it's super clean and it's got a good bit of weight. So you've got six plugs right here and it sits really nicely. I usually tuck it right up against the legs of my keyboard stand. It's not going anywhere. It's a really long, I think 15 foot cable end here. Next up, let's talk about MIDI controllers. Now I'm a huge fan of the Korg Nano Control 2. I don't take a MIDI keyboard with me most of the time when I'm gonna go play at church. But I do take the Nano Control 2 with me because it allows me to assign and map everything I need in Mainstage or Ableton Live to this controller. And then when I get to church, I just set it right on top of whatever keyboard is there. And I've already been able to practice and get the muscle memory built up for the knobs, faders, and button presses that are gonna be a part of my performance. The Nano Control 2 is really inexpensive. It's just run off of USB power, so you plug it straight into the computer, and that's it. And with the Sunday Keys decal, everything's simple, color-coded, and easy to understand. Next up, no matter where I go, I always take a sustain pedal, even if there's one at the venue or the church where I'm gonna be playing. Why? Because sustain pedals are notorious for breaking at the most inopportune times. So I think it's a really good idea to always take a backup. All right, next up, let's talk about audio. I always like to throw an audio interface in my bag, even if the church has an audio interface in place. And I particularly like the Focusrite 4i4 that I'm holding here because it gives me four audio outputs in case I need them. And it also has MIDI. So if the keyboard is having some issues with its USB jack or something, I could just run MIDI from that to the Focusrite and I'm still gonna be able to connect that keyboard to my computer. One thing people ask is, can I just use the headphone jack on my Mac instead of buying an audio interface? I would say if you're just starting out, the headphone jack is not a bad place to start. You can get good audio quality out of the headphone jack alone with just an adapter cable. A couple reasons an audio interface is a worthwhile long-term investment to consider. You get a separated audio output from your system, so you don't have to remember to turn off notifications or worry about that sort of thing bleeding into the house. With some audio interfaces, you'll experience a little bit less latency or delay between playing something and hearing something. And if you purchase an audio interface with multiple outputs, then you have more flexibility and control over the way your audio is sent to the sound system. 
All right, next up, in-ear monitors. I'm using the IE400 Pros from Sennheiser right now. I've been using these for a good while. They're really great in-ears that sound good, plugged into pretty much any in-ear monitoring system that I've used. Comes with this great case, so they're protected and travel. Cable's plenty long. One little thing that I always like to take with me, especially if I'm playing somewhere I've never played before, is an eighth to quarter inch adapter. Some in-ear monitor systems like Avioms only have a quarter inch plug, but obviously the in-ears are eighth inch. And Sometimes if you can't find that adapter, you're out of luck. Next up, maybe the most important component of my pack list, a nice little roll of gaff tape, not duct tape, gaff tape. This tape I can use to place cables wherever I need to, make sure everything is locked down, that everything looks neat. There's nothing that somebody walking on stage to do announcements could trip over. But because it's gaff tape, I also know it's not gonna leave a sticky residue all over my cables whenever I peel things back up. Next up, while this doesn't technically fit in my bag, it does go with me everywhere I go. I'm a big fan of taking a dedicated laptop stand. Please do not put your expensive investment of a MacBook on a music stand if you can help it. A robust laptop stand with tripod legs that's designed to hold a laptop securely on stage is one of the best investments you can make. This particular stand is from Samson. It's got adjustable tilt, multiple heights, and honestly, one of my favorite features, it comes with this really sticky pad that you just put on there and it makes sure that your laptop's not gonna slide off to either side. So even if it gets run into by somebody walking by, your laptop's gonna be held secure. All of the pieces of gear I just mentioned come together to help me take my Sunday Keys rig with me wherever I go. Sunday Keys is honestly the most important ingredient because it lets me do all of my preparation at home, build great sounding patches, smooth transitions throughout the set list, and know that that's gonna translate 100% when I get to church. So we'll put a link in the description if you'd like to learn about Sunday Keys. Now, no matter what gear you choose to take with you when you go play at church, I wanna recommend that you come up with a specific order that you do your setup and tear down in. I have a particular formula. I always unpack my bag in the exact same order, making the same connections time after time. And it might seem like I'm overthinking it to you, but I think that having that muscle memory makes me less likely to miss something, to make a mistake, especially if it's early in the morning, maybe I haven't had that second cup of coffee yet and I'm a little bit groggy. So I'm gonna put the order that I found and like to approach this in on screen. You can pause the video if you'd like to see how I approach it. And then come up with an order for yourself, stick to it, refine it. It's gonna make you way less likely to miss something important when you're setting up and tearing down. Leave a comment and let us know what gear you absolutely have to have every time you play at church. Maybe we missed a piece of gear or two that has come in clutch and saved you some time or hassle. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. We really appreciate the support. We'll see you in the next video. It's a little short. Be the bat. <laughs> oh gosh. Ha, ha, ha.